All right, everybody. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome today to a video about Pokey Rogue items. Now, we're going to be making two separate tier lists today. We're going to be making a classic item tier list as well as an endless one because some items have more use in classic than they have in endless and vice versa. We have the always grab. This is something that if you see this item, you pretty much always want to be grabbing it. You never want to be just like leaving it away or just being like, I don't know if I really want it. They're basically every single situation where they show up, you always want it. The tier below it is amazing find. These items are great and you pretty much always want to be picking up unless you see something always like always grab on there and next to it. But these are also really, really nice to pick up. Take it or leave it tier is a little bit more of like, um, sometimes you want to take it, sometimes you don't. Sometimes they're really helpful in a certain situation or a certain uh, like team that you have. The next tier below that is situational. Now, this one's going to be an interesting tier because you could technically put pretty much every item in this tier, but I think it's a good tier that I'm going to kind of be using a little bit more sparingly than that, where it's going to have a whole bunch of items where sometimes they're going to be useful in some teams, but they can also be completely useless on other teams. The last tier is basically never. And this is a tier where I have basically never really picked up these items. I've never really used them. These are all going to be from my experience of this game because I have played this game a lot and I've done a lot of classic mode wins and I've beaten endless mode all 5,850 floors of it. So with this all being my opinion, please let me know if you disagree with me in the comments or if you think something should have been higher, something should have been lower, or if you want more clarity on something, I'd happy to answer your questions in the comments below as well. But first we're going to be doing our classic mode tier list. So, the first stuff we have here are all these different berries. The first one we have is the Lumberry, which I think is like a take it or leave it because having a, a Lumberry on you can always be really, really nice. For example, if you're like sweeping, if you're doing lots of damage um, in classic mode and then you get burned or something, that's going to kind of like ruin your day. You ruin all your damage if you're a physical attacker. And also just like you getting dealt damage, getting paralyzed, getting frozen asleep. It's really nice to have, but it's not like an amazing find. It's only, I think, a Pokeball tier item. I think the Citrus Berry is on the same vein. These two are the perfect like middle ground of you could take it, you could leave it. There's some things that are better, worse, you know. Next is the Lepa Berry, which is the one that gives you extra power points once you run out of it on a move. I think that this is a very good situational item. You never really run out of moves um, unless you're like fighting like your uh, bosses or you're fighting your rivals or trainer fights. You never really run out of the uh, moves that you're going to be using. Um, and also you can buy ethers from the beginning of the game and they're not super expensive. But having them midway through the battle, um, as long as you're not really uh, like just going through faster and faster and then never really like preparing for the next like big fights that are coming up, you never really need this. But it's not like it's always good if you're like kind of like running through and you end up running out of like the uh, power points on, you know, like power up punch or something crazy like Torch Song. It's always nice to kind of like have it be like, oh, yeah. I'll, you know, I'll never do that again. Great. I'm glad that I had that Lepa Berry because otherwise I'd be dead here. For me, they're more situational because I tr I plan on I plan on like my next stages pretty often. Sometimes I do mess up, so sometimes Lepa berries are nice, but they're kind of like that's the tier for me. Next is the Enigma berry, similar to a Citrus berry, but it only happens when you get hit by a super effective move. <laughs> Obviously, it's a situational item because it only happens when you get hit super effectively. I think it heals just about the same as the Citrus Berry, um, but then they these can both proc at the same time if you go below 50% of your health with Citrus Berry. So I think that it's like it's not bad to have. Um, it could definitely like maybe have you live another move. But a lot of the times when you're sweeping with something, um, it's gonna probably get knocked out in a single hit. So I'm not 100% sure if you really want this. Um, it's more of a like a situational uh, like berry. Uh, I don't normally take these very often, but it's nice to have if it ever happens, if it ever comes up. So I think it's good, but it's more situational. All right, next I'm gonna kind of skip ahead a little bit and I'm gonna grab the Starf Berry. Now at the beginning of Poke Rogue, when I first started playing, basically all these berries I never picked up, I never used. I normally just grabbed like potions and stuff to just stay at full HP and keep going. But the more I played, the more I've come to love these five berries specifically. I think these five berries are the best out of all of them. 
Now, this one's a lot more of a the lowest of the five, but they're still really nice. What it does is as soon as you hit below 25% of your health, I think that's the threshold, you'll get hit by a sharply boosted stat. So you'll get randomly a two plus boost to attack, special attack, speed, special defense, or defense, which can come in clutch and can be really, really nice. But I think that the start berry is great to have because randomly getting a boosted speed or defenses when you're getting hit is really nice. It can have you live moves that you never really were planning on and then just sweep from there. So I think that these are all great. And next, I'm going to kind of put the rest of these berries in basically never because I, though they're all good in their own right, like for speed, uh, special defense, defense, attack, critical hit ratio, and special attack, they're all good but i don't really use them that much i think that the i normally just kind of look for these five berries these ones i basically never pick up that doesn't mean that they're like useless they are definitely useful i just personally never really pick them up all that much um so i'm just going to kind of put all the rest of the berries in basically never because if you have these five berries you're kind of good but you could definitely pick these up they're not bad to have but i i personally just don't pick them up that much Next is the items that have saved all of my runs. Now, these are the X items. They are super, super good. But I think they're only really good when you're going up against a gym leader, a uh, trainer fight, the evil team. I think they're perfect for that. And that's kind of what they're built for. Because you can, uh, once you pull it, you have five turns of basically a boost. So for this one, this is the X attack. So once you pull it, the next five rounds, you have a plus one attack just across the board permanently. So it could be super, super helpful like when you're about to go into like a fight against Ivy or your rival and you have a sweeper that's a physical attacker. If you pick up five of these X attacks, you could just, if you're fast enough, you could just kill everything in like one hit pretty much. It's been the savior a lot of my runs. So I really like these, but... I think for the X items, I always grab them only if we're about to go into a fight where they are useful. So because they're somewhat situational, but I always grab them, I think I'm going to put them in amazing finds. All of these, pretty much. Except for the X accuracy. There are some moves that are really strong, but have bad accuracy that I kind of run with. So I think that they're more take it or leave it. It really depends on what moves you're really sweeping with. But the X attack, X special attack, the X speed especially are the main ones that I run with. Because you don't really need the X defense or the X special defense if you're going to just sweep it. But they're still good. Same with the dire hit. The dire hit can be good if you can collectively get uh, three dire hits. Because if you have three dire hits, every move you have will crit. If you have one, I believe you get a 12.5% chance to crit on every hit. If you have two, it's a 50-50. If you have three, you always crit. So the dire hits are good as well. But I'm going to put the defenses just below it. Okay, and next on the tier list is the EXP balance item. Now, this one's had a lot of controversy with me. I personally despise the EXP balance because the way I normally play classic mode is I have one mod in front. And I just kind of use that one mon and that's it. And I sweep that way. But it is useful if you're going through your first time and you're kind of using your whole team for a bunch of fights and you're not solely using one Pokemon and you're having, you know, more than one types. Because uh, every time on stream, I'm doing like mono challenges where I only have one type. Uh, so this is kind of not as useful for me. But I can understand its use case if you're using like the entire team and you have one mon that you're trying to train up to get uh, on contact with the rest of the team. So I think because of that, I personally put it in, I basically never pick it up, but that's because I have so much stuff unlocked that I can kind of rely on more, just pretty much one Pokemon and sweep and that's it. So I think ultimately I'm going to put this in situational because it's situational depending on how you play the game. If you use your entire team or you really just like use one mon and sweep like I do. Now, on the contrary, the EXP all item, I pretty much always grab. Because it's basically just going to give you more experience in the back. Overall, it gives you more experience. While the EXP balance kind of takes it away, it still keeps the same number of experience giving to your entire party. But the EXP all item just grants 20% more experience to the Pokemon who aren't in the party. And you can stack up to five of these. You get two of these automatically from fighting the rival. 
But if you get all five, then it's basically like the Pokemon's in front and it gets all the experience just like just the same as the bond in the front. So I think this is the first like always grab item. It's always super nice to have and I really like it a lot. And the more experience you have, the higher level Pokemon you are and the stronger they are. So it's pretty obvious lately that this one is going to be at the top. Next is the PowerPoint up. I think this is a definite take it or leave it. Having the ability to use an uh, attack more and more is always great. So it's a take it or leave it. But for the other one, does it have the PowerPoint max? Uh, yes, yes, it does right here. I think this is an amazing find because that just automatically sets it to the max one and you don't have to worry about PowerPoints at all. You have to use three uh, PowerPoint ups to have it use its the have the max number of moves. But with the PowerPoint max, it's just an Ultra Ball tier. So one level above it and it does all three of you three of them for you. So I think they're it's super, super nice to just get to the max number of PowerPoints and not have to worry about it at all. Speaking of PowerPoints, the next part we're going to talk about is Ether's Elixir's Max. I think this one's the Max Elixir. And I don't honestly remember. I think that these are... This one is a take it or leave it uh, for me. It's super nice to like boost all of them back up to Max. But the rest of them are kind of situational. Depending on like... It's kind of like with the Lepa Berry, right? Like, I'll put these actually higher up. I'm going to kind of put these more in order. So I think that the PowerPoint ups, like the giving you more PowerPoints, are nice. and But they're situational depending on, like, what moves you're using. If you're using your entire team and you're not just spamming one move, um, it could be more useful than not. So I think that they're kind of just situational, in my opinion. They could definitely be uh, an amazing find, especially if you're low on PowerPoints and you're not going to be sweeping as much anymore. But if you have all your PowerPoints up, you should be able to have enough moves where you'll be fine. Unless you're using moves that have base five PowerPoints, then you're probably going to be wanting either Lepa Berries so that you could not run out in the fight or ha finding these more often than not. Next is all the Pokeballs. The Pokeball itself, I basically never pick it up. Literally, it's at the top of basically never. If I don't have anything situational or I don't find anything that's of this tier, I basically just take the Pokeball because you never know. You'll find a shiny or something um, and you're out of Pokeballs, then that sucks. But they're always nice to have. I think the same will go for um, the Great Balls as well. Like if I find Great Balls, I'll pick those up over the Pokeballs, obviously, just because there's no use. Um, but the Ultra Balls are more situational for me. It depends on if I'm running with a full team or not. Um, but then the rest of these, I think, are take it or leave it. This one's an amazing find, but it could be not as useful, if that makes sense. If you don't have a full team, they're nice to have to catch better Pokemon to also add to your uh, roster. And also to get them caught so that you can use them in future runs or to get more candies so that they can be stronger next time you go through. Unlocking natures, unlocking hidden abilities, passive abilities, reducing costs are nice. So actually, now that I'm thinking about it, I'm going to put this, uh, the Great Balls, actually up in situational because they are nice to get. Now, this is also coming from a person who has completed the Pokedex and reduced the cost of pretty much every Pokemon down at least by one. So for me, there's more situational, but for people who are just starting out, get Pokeballs, get Great Balls, Ultra Balls. They're super nice to have because the more Pokemon you collect, the, more, the stronger they'll get and the better they'll be in the future runs. Now, next are the lures, and these have a little bit of a backstory to them. When I was first starting out, I always got lures. I always made sure to get these because then you'll get more double battles, and double battles mean, you know, more Pokemon and more experience. But that also means you have to fight more. So if you're not prepared, if you don't have, like, two Pokemon that are, like, geared up, ready to fight, if they don't have, like, the experience that they need... It could be a little bit harder. They could be a little bit more situational. But overall, I think that they're good. For me, the lure, I basically never pick up. This one is more situational. And it's kind of like with the max lure as well. Yeah, I'll put them like this. For me, the lures, I think, are really good. You do need two mons that either are good in doubles or good enough together. Like one with Earthquake, Stab, and then one with Protect or something. To really like kind of like go all out. They are very nice because it gets you more experience. And that's kind of like how you get experience a lot at the start unless you have Poke Rest enabled where you don't really have to worry about it all that much. But I think the lures can be nice, especially also if you're doing like shiny hunting, having lures, you get more Pokemon, more shinies, just, you know, as simple as that. So I think that they're more situational because sometimes you need them. Um, sometimes you won't need them. And you honestly, you want to stick to one-on-ones. 
which is when I'm doing challenges in classic mode, that's what I prefer. One-on-ones are a lot easier to deal with than uh, 2v2s. Um, but that uh, that's kind of like my take on them, is that if you need levels, they're great. If you want to find more shinies or more Pokemon, they're great to have as well. Next is the potions. I could easily put all the potions and the revives in the situational tier because they are exactly as they exactly as i said they're situational sometimes you need health sometimes you don't but i think i'm going to put the full restore and honestly the hyper potion higher up in the take it or leave it tier same thing with like the max revive but the rest of these here i'll put them in order as how i think about how i think about them the full heal, I think, is nice to have, too, because sometimes you just got, like, flame body burned and you just want to get rid of it. So I think that's good and higher above there. And then the revives, I think, are better than the potions overall, because if, let's say, like, you have a sh your shiny mon and it, go and it falls in battle, you'll lose that luck that they give until they're revived. And so I've used revives a lot just to bring the, <laughs> the mon that has all my luck in it back up so that the next round I can use them again for their luck or to use them in battle. The Sacred Ash is definitely going to take it or leave it. Well, if you find it for free, that means you probably have a lot of your mons that are down. I think the, the chances of you finding, like, the revives and the Sacred Ashes go up the more Pokemon you have down. So if you find them, they're probably perfect. I've never really found Sacred Ashes in the Pokebox um, or the Pokebank or whatever you want to call it. So I would honestly take it or leave it. These two mostly are the ones that I grab the most. Uh, because this one revives to full, this one heals pretty much 50% um, in this game. Oh yeah, I don't know if, uh, if you knew, but Potion does heal base 20, but it will hear, heal 10% of your Pokemon's max HP. So if you're like level 200 or something, you'll instead of healing just 20 and not really helping at all, it will heal 10% of that Pokemon's max HP if it surpasses 20 HP. This one is 25% and the base 60, I'm pretty sure, just like it is updated. And this is, uh, I don't know if this was 200 or oh, and this one's five, uh, 50, but this is 50% of the max HP. And then obviously the max potion is 100% and this one's 100% plus a full heal on top of it. So I think they're more situational, but they're all good in their own way. Now, the Reviver Seed is an amazing find. It could be a matter of you winning or losing if a Mon falls in battle. Like, I had a round where I was doing my fighting only run, and the only reason why I won is because a Pokemon got burned and didn't kill with, like, a, with a punch attack, I think Mach Punch. Um, but then it fell and got revived, and it lost its burned condition, and it was able to Mach Punch, outspeed, kill. And that was amazing. I think the Reviver Seeds are always nice to have. It's better to have a Pokemon alive than down. And this only procs once your Mon goes down, and then it'll, it will then use it um, and revive itself back to 50%. It will lose all its stats that it gained during the fight, but I still think overall it's, like, good. Though, I won't put it in always grab, because when you go to the final boss, there is a chance that it can, every turn on phase two, it will pick up your items. It will steal an item from you once every turn. And if it picks up the Reviver Seed, it could be, like, not good. It could be honestly pretty bad if you end up losing that and then it gains that. So it's def it's an amazing find. It's definitely beautiful. I would pretty much always grab it, but there are some times where you want to be a little bit more careful with your items because if it gets that, it you could lose right then and there. Next are the money items. Now, I think these are definitely uh, <laughs> at least in the take it or leave it slot. Um, especially these, these ones. I think that this, the Relic Gold is probably, yeah, something like there. Having more money means that you can buy more stuff and re-roll more times. So it's obviously amazing. Like, it's never situational. Money is always a factor in Poke Rogue, especially when you're going through and you're buying potions. Because if you don't have enough potions to heal your party up or the bond that you're going to be using primarily, then you could lose the run in the, those ways there. So just having them is always good to have. More money is always great. I don't really think I need to explain that more than that. Next are the rare candy items. Now, I think that these are both really, really good. What the rare candy does, for those who don't know, is it's kind of like a rare candy, but it will give a rare candy to everyone in your party. So everyone will level up. I think these are, this is an amazing find. I really am a fan of these rare candies because not only do they give you a level, but they increase your friendship by a lot as well, especially in classic mode. 
these items um are what i use primarily for hunting to get or not hunting but just grinding for candies mostly these items give you a lot of friendship which give you more candies which strengthen your pokemon more and further runs and unlock passives reduce costs all that fun stuff next is the exp charms i think that these um when you're first starting out and you don't have like pokey rust and you're not getting like a bunch of yeah, experience alls i think these are pretty much like an uh, always grab because you know more experience are is better i think i personally don't grab them as much um because i'm more focused on getting uh the completion of all the passives unlocked and all the reduced costs but they're always great they always increase the amount of experience you get and i think that they are great the more experience the stronger pokemon you get overall so i think i don't have to explain it more than that it's just that good the candy jar which every time you have a candy jar you can stack it up to 99 times it'll increase the number of levels you gain from the rare and rare candy by one so if you have one candy jar and you grab a rare candy it'll increase the pokemon's level by two instead of one i always really like picking this up it's an amazing find but i don't know why i kind of like lean against it in um when i'm playing through classic mode um it's not that i lean against it i guess it's just that i don't really pick them up maybe it's just because i don't really see them as often um but i think it's great it's a great item i mean more levels obviously the better and stronger your pokemon will be but i think it's a, it's great it's like the lowest i think for me personally it's just below the master ball as an amazing find so it's like the bottom of amazing find so it's a great item definitely consider it but um i wouldn't like always grab it there's better items and more in more situations i think than the candy jar but it's still really really good next um these are just it, the nature mints in general a long time ago, the Nature Mints actually didn't unlock the nature permanently for that Pokemon. So if you got a Modest Mint for your, like, Gardevoir or something, it wouldn't keep the Modest Nature for future runs. So it was more of a very situational tier item. But now, once you get that, once you give that Nature Mint to a Pokemon in your party, you can use that nature moving on. So I think it's an amazing find. I think it's really, really nice um if you don't have like a, the best nature for that pokemon unlocked yet so i think you pretty much always want to pick it up because if you even if you lose that run the next run you're going to be doing your pokemon is just going to be a lot stronger and a lot better so i think picking up the nature mints especially if it's a good nature for the pokemon that you're going to be adding it to is always is a fantastic pickup because not only for the next run but the one after and one after and after and more and more and more and more and more i think it's just going to be a permanent buff throughout your entire account if you can unlock the correct natures for every pokemon that you want next are all the tms i think that this is supposed to be like pokeball tier great ball tier ultra ball tier which is why they're colored that way these items are all situational i'm just gonna be putting them um right below these like obviously they're good for but i guess for me i have a lot of egg moves unlocked some of these i some of these can be like thunderbolt ice beam flamethrower some of these can be just like scald some really strong moves and so if you don't like have a bunch of egg moves unlocked um or just like if you just want to like power up your pokemon even more give like protect on like the basic pokeball tier that is something i kind of pick up a lot of the time but i could see i could definitely understand like if you're just like starting out you don't have all the egg moves unlocked of the pokemon that you're bringing or if you're bringing in a pokemon that just like got added to the team and it's it moves sets kind of suck um getting at one of these can definitely just make it a lot better of a pokemon so I completely, completely get making these. For me, they're just more situational. Oh my word. Okay, the next item is a item that could save or ruin a run. So next is the map. In classic mode, always grab the map. It's useful in every scenario. For me, I use I do a lot of challenge runs, so there's a lot of areas where I want to go to get certain Pokemon or areas that I want to avoid so I, that I don't like get messed up because there's like, uh, for example, I was doing my fire run and I lost the first few runs because I kept getting into the lake or into the swamp where there's a bunch of water types. And so I couldn't really beat them up, so I lost like early on. But when I finally got the map, I was able to you know skip those areas and I never really had to worry about them. Let me go ahead and uh, show you briefly kind of like what once you get the map, what you'll kind of see. There is a layout in this game of different places that you can go. So you'll start from uh, you'll get to the plains on floor 10 and then you'll 
these arrows will be kind of like where you can go there's sometimes you'll go to the metropolis and go around this way there's special chances of getting to special places and stuff like that so being able to kind of direct yourself and go in which path you want especially in classic mode is insanely insanely useful um also if you want to get that picture so that you can have it laid out it's on their wiki page or if you go and join the discord uh, there will be more useful links like that in the pinned comments in my pokey rogue uh text channel next is the this is just the magnet but this is i'm pretty sure what it means it's kind of stand in for all of the like power up moves so like the black belt for fighting the magnet for electric the charcoal for fire etc so I think these are always an amazing find. They're always super, super nice to kind of power up your Pokemon, especially if you have um, like a move that you're kind of using a lot and a lot. Just giving it a 20% boost to damage is super nice. I mean, I, there's not much else I, could expl I need to explain. It's such an amazing find. You get 20% boost to damage on that kind of move, which is super nice. So the only way these spawn is if you have an attacking move that deals damage in your entire party so if you have one bond that has like, you know, one coverage move, like a poison move, there is still a chance that you'll get picked up the the poison marb to increase the damage. So sometimes you'll be playing through and then you'll be like, I have a normal move somewhere. Yeah, and it'll just like give you the item to boost your normal moves. And you'll be like, well, I don't even know who has it. And you go through your items and be like, oh my word, he's got it. And so then that's when you give them the, uh, the silk scarf to boost that damage. But most of the time if you're especially if you're doing a, a mono like type run these are super super nice to have so i pretty much always pick them up um and even if i'm not doing a challenge run boosting up a any damage by 20 percent is always good i never see a problem with that so i always add that next are basically the vitamins the hp up protein calcium iron zinc and carbos for uh the different stats in the game now these are very very nice i think they're some of the best items in the game because they just give you a 10 percent boost to that stat um and you could hold as many number of these as you have in ivs so if you have a perfect pokemon that has 31 ivs in a certain stat you can hold 31 of them but if you only have two you can't even uh, you can only have two of those items on there giving a 20 percent boost i think it's a take it or leave it it's more it's better than the power points in my opinion but it can be dependent on like the kind of one you get so if you get like a like the defensive ones they're not as useful as the offensive ones carbos i think is one of the best ones hp up is another really good one is they i think the best of the defensive ones because it hits uh, it protects you more obviously from defense and special defense um but i still think uh, they're really good it's definitely a consideration to add to any pokemon uh any boost is super super nice there okay this is where it's going to get a little controversial. I think, I will be honest, I basically never pick these up. Now, I will I'll explain the positives of it first. It gives you a 50%, it gives you a stab boost on whichever terror type you get. And that's pretty much all my positives about it. First, you have to pick up the terror orb, which is an ultra tier item. And then after that, there is a chance for any of the terror shards to show up and get added to your roster of an ultra ball tier item and the reason why i think this is bad is because there's a lot of great ultra ball tier items that you could be picking up and that are generally more useful like the nature mints like the rare candies the big nugget stuff like that the powerpoint max this will flood the ultra ball tier items a lot it'll completely flood the item pool where you'll pretty much only be getting the terror shards and you'll get random ones so like maybe you'll get like water you won't have anything that boosts water it can maybe help defensively but that's it you'd rather focus on your offense and trying to do these classic runs in, in a roguelike than you would rather have on your defenses like having defense is great it it's better than nothing but if you don't get an option i i could go on this forever i i think the i think the terra options are horrendous i've tried them out they haven't been very useful, especially because they only last five, I think they last five or 10 rounds, which is not enough. There is an update I've heard that is coming out that's going to kind of fix how the Terry, uh, the terrestrialization works in this game. So maybe this, um, maybe I'll change my mind about it later. But as of right now in the current version, 
I basically never pick it up. I'd even put it in never pick it up. I would put it in below the tier that it's currently in. It's definitely at the bottom of the tier for me. The next one is the IV scanner. This is definitely a situational one. If you're trying to fill out the decks and get better IVs, like if you're first starting out just catching Pokemon and getting better IVs, it's great to like kind of know and see like, oh, this one has really good attack. Great, I should probably catch that. So that my next runs, whenever I start with that Pokemon, they'll have great attack. But it's also a little, just a little annoying because every time you do, you start a wave, you'll get asked, do you want to scan this Pokemon for its IVs? And you have to press like no, or if you press yes, then it will like give you a little animation and then it will show you the like the stats of two of them. You can stack this up to three times to then show all of its stats or all of its IVs. But if you only have one, it'll just show the top two best IVs, which I think is great. I've used it a lot when I'm like grinding to try and like get candies and just try and like complete like the IV lists. Um, so I think it's useful. I don't really pick it up anymore because I don't really have to worry about it because most of my Pokemon have 30 IV minimum, um, except for like legendaries because I don't really catch that many of them. But overall, I think it's situational. If you're first starting out, it's great to know, but it can be just a little bit annoying like later on. Next is the baton. Now the baton has gotten an, an icon change, so it doesn't look like the leak item anymore. Um, it looks like an actual baton. Now what the baton does is you it's basically like any mon could use baton pass pretty much. You could set up with one mon, use the baton item in your uh, on the Pokemon, and then switch to something else. I think this is a very situational item. I basically never used it, especially because it is a rogue tier item which is insanely high for what the baton does. Now the baton, it could be really good on the right team. It could be insanely good. You could get a Mon that has simple, like cosmic power, swords dance, like quiver dance, all that stuff. And it could be amazing. And then you pass it to one Mon and then they can sweep. But I really don't use it that much. I don't think it's a great item in my opinion. Like it's useful in its own ways, but it's not always like what I'm really wanting to go for. It's very situational, very team dependent. Next is the Quick Law. Oh, the Quick Law. I think it's always just great to pick up. It's never bad to always want to go first. It, it'll give you, I think it gives you a 10% chance to go first. I think you can stack this as well. I'm not 100% sure. I think it gives you a plus one priority, which is always really nice to be going before your opponent. In like 95% of Pokemon, it is a good item to always want to go first. So I think it's an amazing find. It's definitely something you want to consider, especially for a slower Mon. Um, it can be really, really good. Next is the Memory Mushroom. Now, this is, I think, the bottom of Take It or Leave It. It used to not actually give you the option of learning your egg moves again. Um, it used to just give the um, item or uh, the moves that uh, the Pokemon can learn from its current level backwards, which is always nice, especially if you're getting a new Pokemon added to the team. It could be very nice to just be like, oh, you don't have like one of your best moves because you got a random move set. Let's add that back. Or if you're like, like for me on I, a lot of runs, I'm just kind of like spamming through the first few levels. I might accidentally forget a really strong attack and I'll be like, damn, now I got to get a memory mushroom to add it back. You know, it's good to have. It's a very much a take it or leave it. It's at the bottom of it, but I think it's always like nice to have. Next are the evolution items. Um, these items are amazing finds because you always want to, you pretty much always want to evolve your Pokemon. Um, this list doesn't have um, a few new items on it, which is uh, the Scope Lens um, and the Eviolite more specifically. They just added the Eviolite. Um, so pretty much these are amazing finds. You pretty much always want to be evolving your Pokemon, except for a certain few. I put the Eviolite right here alongside the Evolution items because it's always great to uh, just like put it on a Pokemon who hasn't fully evolved yet or takes a long time to evolve and you just want to give it some more defense while it's still trying to level up and being used. Um, and the Eviolite doesn't stop your Pokemon from evolving. It doesn't stop the items coming in from the bank. Um, so like if you're using like a Dusclops, you'd still find the linking cord. It would still show up in the Great Ball tier item. So you can always have that option of evolving it later down the line. Now, the Mega Ring and the Dynamax Band. These are on an amazing find for me. And this is going to go in the, the Gigantamax room will go in the same tier as uh, the Evolutions, just a little bit above. Because there's a similar kind of like way that these are, are working, kind of similar to the Terra Shards. Uh, you have to get the Rogue Tier item to uh, get the Mega Ring. And then you have to then grab another Rogue Tier item for the specific stone for that Pokemon to evolve. 
Now, later on through your classic modes, the chances of finding these and the corresponding items go up, but that's not 100%. So you could get the mega, you can get the uh, mega ring or the Dynamax band, even without like having a Pokemon that can mega or Gigantamax. And so then it's kind of like, it's amazing find. You pretty much always want to pick it up, but there's some teams that don't want to use the either of these, and it can kind of take up a slot of a rogue tier item which can be annoying, which is why it's not in an always grab for me. There's some teams that don't actually want it. And also you still need to get pretty damn lucky to get the items to evolve them even, all oh, the Pokemon even further. So I think that they're in the amazing find section for me. Yeah, especially because the last few runs I've had on stream, these items have shown up and I've grabbed them, but I've never gotten the items afterwards for them. Also, the Mega Stone would go right in front of the Gigantamax because there's more Pokemon that can Mega Evolve than Gigantamax. Next are the um, Egg Vouchers. Now, there is also the Premium Egg Voucher, which is the one that's above the that one, and that is an Always Grab, along with this. This is the bottom of Always Grab, and then this is also an amazing find, and I'll put that, like, right here. Basically, um, these give you eggs, which could give you egg moves. They could give you... Pokemon, they give you, they basically just give you free captures, if, if that's if that's how you want to think about it. And there's three different one, there's three different uh, places to redeem them. You can get a move up, which has a higher chance of getting the egg moves unlocked of Pokemon, which can be super super nice. There's the legendary up, where every day there's a new legendary that will um, that'll be in legendary eggs and an increased chance of legendary eggs. Um, and then there's a shiny up, which gives you a higher chance for shiny Pokemon. I think that the shiny up is more useful overall, but for uh, dex completion, the legendary up is really use, uh, really useful. I've never really used the move up just because I've get I've gotten so many of these egg vouchers just from playing and playing and playing that I haven't had a need to kind of use the move ones. But when you're first starting out, I think that either doing the shiny up, actually doing all any of them are really good. There's no wrong option when you first start out. Personally, I think the shiny one is just more fun because shiny Pokemon are fantastic. Uh, but that's how I think. These are always great to have. I think these are always nice. So I I would, they're amazing finds. You should pretty much always grab them unless you find something else that's more useful. Next is the ability patch and the shiny charm. The shiny charm is definitely a very good item to pick up. And the ability patch I think is just below the evolution items. Now this increases your shiny chances by a drastic amount. Uh, 2048 uh, one out of 2048 chances but once you get your first shiny charm it brings it down to i think one out of 256 chance and you can stack it up to four times from one out of 256 with one to one out of uh, 128 one out of 64 and then one out of 32 i think i believe that's the rate which is absolutely insane that you could get shiny uh shiny mons that easily now it is a master ball tier item and it is very rare um but it's still like you if you see it you pretty much always want it there's no reason to not get it it's because it's more shiny pokemon also just means more candies more luck for better items in the later on down the line so i think it's always good the ability patch is nice because it gives you a very high a much higher chance of finding a hidden ability on a pokemon which can be very useful um, not as useful as shinies, but pretty, pretty nice. Next is the focus band. The focus band is, I would think, also pretty good. Um, I would put probably, probably just below or above the quick claw. These two are kind of interchangeable. This gives you a 10% chance to live on one HP, which can be the definition of a game winning or game losing scenario. I've had this proc and it saves runs, and um, uh, but sometimes it just never gets never procs and it's a useless item it's very dependent on the kind of like luck you have um but it can overall it's overall just like good to have that chance of it uh li having your pokemon live next is the soothe bell i love the soothe bell i pretty much always pick up the soothe bell um basically it doubles any uh change um of friendship which means you get candies faster and you evolve your pokemon that need friendship faster um it's but i mostly just use it for candies because the faster you get candies obviously the stronger uh reduced cost passive ability unlock all that it's super nice to always want the soothe bell unless you are already like kind of like used that you already have the passive unlock in the um reduced cost all the way down 
then it's not as useful, but then you can put it on some other Pokemon and you can train up it using that. So I think it's always good. Next is the Amulet Coin, which is just more money. The Amulet Coin basically just gives you a 20% increase on all money gains from, the, from any source. So I think it's super useful because just having more money means you can buy more, you know, potions, you can reroll more in the, uh, for the, the Pokebank and all that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, I don't think I really need to explain it more than that. More money is better, and this gives you just a flat 20% increase on any single source of money. Leftovers! This is another amazing find. Um, this is definitely something that I really like. It's just healing you every turn. Super nice. I don't think there's much needed explanation on how good the leftovers are, so I'm just gonna put it in amazing find. It heals you 1 16th of your HP every single turn. Super useful, super nice, and yeah. King's Rock! Now, the King's Rock, I think, is um, is really good because it does a 10% chance to flinch every turn. But it's only useful on, like, a Sweeper or someone who's really fast or hits multiple times. Um, so I think that it's useful. And overall, it's overall just a lot better. Uh, a lot better than a lot of other items that you can add to a list. But it is kind of one of the more underwhelming rogue tier items. But if you have a good build for it, it could be insanely useful. Similar to the Shell Bell, but instead of flinching, um, you get healed based on how much damage you deal. Um, which is could be really good, especially if you're finding a Mon that has a lot of HP. You'll get a lot of HP back because I believe it's 1 8th of the damage you deal you get healed back. Or maybe the 1 16th. Something like that. But it's still super strong. A super, super nice item to have. Um, and I would pretty much always have that on my Pokemon uh, if I can. The more healing is better than none. Golden Punch is on the similar vein of the Amulet Coin. All the damage you deal, you will gain that amount in money. I believe, it, actually, I think it's 50% of the damage you deal, but you can stack this item and get more and more money. So I think it is super nice, especially on your Sweeper Mon. You want to put it in on your front Mon and then just hit and do damage. You'll get money, and then you can spend that money. More money is better. I think that's all I got to say. The Grip Claw. Now, this item... Is on a similar vein kind of of King's Rock, but I think it's a lot better because you, there are the Pokemon that you fight in this game will, once you get a little bit farther in, pretty much always have at least one item that they're holding on to. And since you're attacking primarily to knock these Pokemon out, once you hit, there's a chance that you could steal that item from them. You could get items like Golden Punch, you could get items like the Reviver Seed or the Damage Up, stuff like that. It, it's insane that you can pick up these amazingly strong items just from this one item. So I think it's very, very good, especially because if you see it, like when you're fighting like later on, like the final battles, all the Pokemon have like a really strong item, like Focus Band, Reviver Seas, they'll have King's Rocks, they'll have damage up. They have a much better move pull. And if you're sweeping with, with like one Mon, you could basically accidentally like take items from them that are really, really strong. Or even if you just take a berry, that's still good. It's like you didn't have to like spend a whole like turn of the of the wheel to get one. You could just get one for free that way, which is insanely strong. The items in this game can make or break a run, which is why we're kind of doing this list. So I think the Grip Claw is something that is super, super useful. Honestly, I'm going to put it above the damage up because you could get damage up items from that. The only thing this thing can't steal are items uh, are are the vitamins in this game. Um, but other, otherwise, it can steal pretty much everything, anything else. I, I've i heard some people say that it could, that if the opponents have them, they could steal your Mega Stone and you lose your Mega. But I've never had that happen to me, so I don't know if that's true or not. I'm actually going to skip this item and we're going to go to the Berry Pouch. Now, this is depending, this Berry Pouch is really good depending on how you play. Now, because I pick up a bunch of berries, I like the Berry Pouch a lot. Uh, basically what it does is it, um, you can stack up to three of them, and if you get, uh, if you use a berry, there's a 25% chance that you end up not using it, and you just keep the berry with you. It's just more berries, in general. It's a rogue tier item, so it's a pretty high cost for it, but if you find it, you could start picking up, uh, even these berries get to be super useful. Starf berries, citrus berries, lump berries, they get reusable, so it's just more berries in general so it's really nice because berries can help or can only do good they can't really do anything negative so this is where things might get a little controversial these two items are really good the dna splicers can fuse two pokemon together fusing abilities um typing 
Um, and they also average out the stats of the two Pokemon. And this item lets you ha hit multiple times, but it does reduce the damage overall that you would deal for letting you attack more than once in a turn. These are both situational. These are both situationally good. Now I know it. it's like they could make busted mons with the fusions. It, you could use Torch Song with a uh, multi-hit and it's crazy strong. Yes. But that's the definition of situational in my opinion. Both these items can be insanely strong. But you need to have like it kind of prepared or thought of what you on your team what you would kind of want to fuse. Especially like because I've had runs where I get the DNA splices early on and it's like super fun because you know fusions are obviously really fun to play with because they're not normal Pokemon. And so I fused them together. But that is also one less Pokemon, one less body on your team that could be taking hits and defending and helping and attacking. It could come at a great cost. Like I've lost runs because I've used DNA Spicers and I don't have more Mons to fight. The multi lens I, I thought was like an always grab, always grab item. But it's only really useful on Pokemon that either try to flinch a lot with like multi hits and King's Rocks. Or if you want, if you have like Power Up Punch or Torch Song to increase or Aqua Step to increase your stats every time you attack. If you don't have the Pokemon that have those moves, then it's not very useful. Like it's nice that it goes through sturdy, I guess, if you hit twice and you do enough damage, but I don't know. I don't know what to say. I personally think these are super situational items and they're not actually that great. Wide Lens is the top of Take It or Leave It. I think that the this can be either super nice. Well, actually, you know what? Now that I think about it, I think it's at the bottom of like the the these items. Instead of adding a percentage increase to moves, it adds a base five accuracy to all the moves on the Pokemon. So instead of like um, having Sleep Powder be, um, I think when it gets like a 10% increase, it would get like 82 point something percent. It'll instead just have 80 accuracy. Boom, simple and easy. So if moves have 95% accuracy, they become 100% accuracy with one of these wide lens. And you can stack up to three. I believe you can only stack up to three of these items so you can get a base increase of accuracy of all your moves by 15%. And there are some times when that's super useful, even on mods that have full accurate moves when you go up against someone who uses Sand Attack on you or Minimize or something like that. This is an item that is specific to Poke Rogue. It's called the Healing Charm. And basically what it does is from any healing source, be it from Leech Seed, Potions, Recover, stuff like that, Berries, it will get a 10% increase to its healing. Obviously, this is an amazing find. It is a little situational, but you're always healing your mons like with potions and like with revives and stuff like that. So it's always nice to just have more increase. Like it also increases the amount you get back from Giga Drain um, and moves like that, which are really good, especially if you have a mon like Whimsicott, who I really like and I think is a really good mon in Pokebro. Um, and I got it with Healing Charm uh, in my first few runs of the game ever. And it was great. I love them all. The Soul Dew. Okay, this I think is also similar to an amazing find. It could be, ah, uh, man. It could be insanely, insanely useful. I'm gonna put it just like right here. I'm gonna put it kind of in the middle. Because what it does is it gives a 10% increase and decrease to your um, nature. So if you are an adamant nature physical attacker, you get negative 10% to special attack and positive 10% to your uh, physical attack, which is fantastic. That is kind of what you want. The more of that you have, the better. So this could be super, super useful if you have like the right natures for a Pokemon. But let's say you have a modest um, Machamp who's a physical attacker. If you have a Soul Dew on it, it will do 10% less damage because you're not using it for a special attack. So I think that it, it's, I think it's a good place here. It's normally going to be pretty much something you always grab because it's just more um, overall stats, which is in the stuff that you'd want if you have the natures for it. Um, so if you, the more you play, the higher this goes in the tier list. But I think it's good to keep here in general because sometimes when you're first starting out, you don't have the nature that you want. So it's not as useful. Next, um, this is an item that only gets unlocked once you beat classic mode. So I'm not gonna really rank it. Um, if, I don't even know if it shows up in classic mode, but if it does, I would put it probably at the bottom of always grab. It's basically, um, it would steal a, an item every turn from the Pokemon if it lives. Um, so it's really good. The lock capsule is the last one we're going to talk about for classic mode. So these, uh, this item is amazing 
Um, what it does is it locks the rarities of the items you roll. So if you roll a Master Ball item um, in the like in the Poke the Poke Lottery, I don't know exactly what they're all called, um, and you get like a Master Ball, but you really really want like a Shiny Charm, right? They're in the same tier. Well, you can use the Lock Capsule to lock that rarity, but for a huge increase in price, you could re-roll it. In classic mode, where you don't get that much access to money, and you have a less option of even finding this in the first place, I think it's the bottom, uh, I, mm, I think it's this. I think it's a take it or leave it. Because you might, you might grab it, you might find it early on, but it might be completely useless to you. Because you might not even have the money, because you're spending money on healing, and making sure your Pokemon are maxed out, ready to fight. And you might not even have any money left over to even use a lock capsule in general. But that's it for the classic mode tier list. I am pretty happy with the list that I have here. Um, it, there are definitely some um, of these items that I could understand if you guys want to talk about in the comments how are better or worse than, I, than you guys think. But please let me know what you guys think down below. All right, and now we're going to be doing our endless tier list. Now, I'm going to go over this a lot faster than I did with the classic mode tier list because I have, I think I explained my thoughts really well with most of these items. And most of these items are pretty much going to remain the same but with a few differences. Um, so I'm going to kind of not really speed run through this, but kind of just like go over my thoughts. So first off, I think um, as you're going on in endless mode, you're pretty much going to get every item in general you're gonna probably get every item you're gonna have that luck you're gonna roll it um and you're gonna get it because there's over five thousand almost six thousand waves in endless mode so you're pretty much going to always get the, any item that you want at some point so i think in general the berries become an amazing find because once you get all the berry pouches the i'll actually put these um these ones lower because i do think they're a little bit worse uh, but they're still super nice to get once you have all the berry pouches all these berries um, can be used pretty much almost infinitely so it's really really nice to have so I kind of give these uh, the berries a bonus because they can end up saving runs especially when you have max healing charms as well these two can pretty much heal you to maximum um, next is the X items and honestly it is the biggest drastic change ever. I basically never pick these up unless I'm starting out my run and I'm struggling to have experience for it. Uh, once you get through Endless, you're pretty much carrying with a legendary Pokemon until you get to a certain point where they're not one-shotting everything anymore. And that's when you kind of switch to a strategy that does uh, set damage rather than you're just like continually sweeping with like a pure power slacking or something like that. So I end up never really picking these up um, in Endless ever. And EXP Balance, I think, is one of the worst items you can pick up in Endless. Because it will give you the experience of the Mon. Because you're pretty much going to be using one Mon as you're going on in Endless. And then, like, you switch from your Sweeper, your main, like, Legendary Sweeper, or your main, like, Normal Sweeper, to someone else. And you don't want to be giving experience except to that Pokemon. Because you want that Pokemon to be as strong as possible and to maintain the sweeping capabilities of Endless Mode. This is like, it's amazing find. Uh, I'll pretty much put it in like amazing, bottom of amazing find. Um, EXP matters at the beginning, um, but once you get like the ball rolling, it's not as important. Um, it's nice to have obviously, but they're not as needed. The power, uh, the PowerPoint items I think are also an amazing find. Um, I will put them here. Um, there are, I uh, actually I put them at the top or take it or leave it because they're aren't trainers here so you just have to fight pokemon so you don't act end up using that many moves um in general these powerpoint items are more for just like leisure than anything else um it's just easier to deal with so i think that these are kind of situational all the healing items are pretty much going to be situational um uh, i'm just gonna put them all in here now like as you're first starting out the the classic mode uh tier list is pretty much what you're going to be looking at but as you're like really getting into endless like not the early game of endless this is the this is when this tier list kind of like takes an effect um except for these these can the reviver items can be really nice especially when you're using a mon with high luck that ends up going getting knocked out you pretty much want to revive it immediately to get its luck back and active the pokeball items i think are definitely take it or leave it all of them because you're want to be you're going to pretty much wanting to be catching pokemon as you're playing 
Um, I pretty much think that this will be at the bottom of an amazing find. And these are pretty much always grab. You pretty much always want these because you're going to be catching Pokemon in Endless. You're going to be going for shinies. You're going to be going for hidden abilities. That's pretty much the main point of Endless is to grind and to get the uh, Pokemon that you want. These, uh, for me, um, are definitely like the bottom of an amazing find. The build that I went through to first beat um, Endless Mode was more of a preferable one-on-one -on -one scenario. So I didn't really like these, uh, but there's a lot more strategies out there. There's a lot more good content and good uh, ideas out there to actually use these to find uh, shiny Pokemon better and faster um, and to go through those really, really quickly. So I think they're good. I think they're really nice for Endless uh, because you'll get to see more Pokemon, obviously. Oh, I forgot to put this. Uh, obviously, this is here as well. Reviver Seed is pretty much the same. I would put it at the top because it's an item that you can hold on to. Um, it's always nice to have. These, all, all the money, I'll put this at the top. The money is, you'll be using a lot of it. I actually put this above here. Yeah, you'll be using a lot of money later on um, because the price of things will continue to go up and up and up. And eventually, once you hit like, I think for 5,500, You'll hit max money and you won't be able to buy any of the items in the shop anymore because they're too expensive and you can't go over a certain threshold. Um, so I think it's kind of funny that that is how it's done, but money is always useful because you're going to be spending it to re-roll items with, um, and also let me just get, take it straight. The lock capsule is the only reason why endless mode can be good is because you'll be re-rolling to get the items that you want as early as possible to be getting master balls to be getting rogue tier balls and all that stuff and you need money for that i'm actually gonna put the relic gold in pretty much always grab because it'll give you a whole bunch of money the rare candies i think are the amazing finds because you are going to be wanting levels but you're also kind of grinding for friendship in a way uh, with the mon that you're kind of sweeping with so just getting more experience that way is also really nice same thing with these I'll put these more of above the EXP share. Um, they're really nice, more experience multiplied overall. As long as you're like keeping up with like the levels of your Pokemon and Endless, these are good to have. Um, but they're not as needed if you're only really using one Pokemon. And when you're doing Endless, you pretty much want a Pokerus Mon on your team. So these become less useful because of Pokerus, but they're still good. They're never bad to have. Candy Jar, always grab the Candy Jars. You'll get to a point in Endless when you'll be desperately needing to just be higher level because the Pokemon is going to be stronger and stronger and stronger. They're going to get tokens to make them even stronger, multiplying their strength and defenses, chances of healing every turn. So you kind of want, this is basically the only thing that you have to somewhat match that is you want to get the max candy jars so that you can level up a hundred times with rare candies because you can stack up to 99. So that each rare candy gives a hundred levels and it's kind of like all you got. So I pretty much always pick these up. Uh, but it also depends on the kind of strategy you're using. Some strategies don't need levels. Uh, but uh, for me, I think the easiest one, which is the Metal Burst and Sturdy strategy, you want this so you have more HP to do more damage. Nature Mints. They're amazing finds. Um, it's basically the same as before um, with that I said in Classic Mode. If you don't have the Nature Unlock for the mod that you want, it's great to have. Um, and pick it up if you don't. That's about it. Okay, this is going to be a little interesting. I'm going to put this one at the top of an amazing find because it can have protect on it and roar, which is really good. But these, uh, uh they're situational. Sometimes you don't have the, um, the mons for it. Or you don't have like the sweeping moves for it. But basically when you're going really far into endless, you basically have everything kind of like unlocked from other Pokemon and fusing and stuff, or you have it from egg moves. You don't really get that far in um, <laughs> Endless when you're using like Thunderbolt. You, you'll get relatively far. You'll get to like uh, maybe like 4,000 depending on the Pokemon you're using, but you won't get to the end of Endless just using those moves. The map doesn't exist in Endless mode. I'll be clear on that. Uh, you cannot get the map in Endless mode. It'd be really nice if you could, but you can't. Every five, every uh, stack of five floors, you'll just go, you'll be moving randomly throughout uh, the biome map. Um, so you won't be able to choose where you go. It will just choose for you these items they're kind of a take it or leave it because you're not really like using it for damage once you get to the endless the point of endless where your damage won't matter pretty much at all any attacking moves that isn't set damage won't matter um so that's kind of my opinion of it it's not as useful later on it can be nice it will it will help you persist a little bit farther through going through and using like your normal base sweeping attacks but later on down the line 
they're kind of useless. Even if you have 99 of them to max out your damage output with them, it won't change a single thing. Next are these vitamins. I think that these are amazing finds. I think that they're super nice, and that's how it's one of the reasons why you can like live and do as much damage as you can um, throughout the beginning of it. And your HP can matter if you're doing your HP sturdy strategy or HP sturdy. If you're doing your metal burst strategy, the more HP you have, the more damage you do back. So I think having these are amazing finds and are super, super nice to pick up. Same with these. I never pick these up. These will flood your endless um, your endless pool. Horrible to pick these up. It will just make things even harder for you to pick up like rare candies or ultra balls and stuff like that. It can get really, really annoying if you accidentally pick these up. These are situational. <laughs> I normally just kind of pick these up just to like not have them in the pool anymore um it is annoying because you're gonna have to like see them every time you start around but if you're spamming through fast enough it, you kind of just can ignore it i think it's just more of a like take it to never see it again pretty much um, in my opinion baton is i basically never pick this up you you don't really sweep in this game um you really don't sweep in endless you use like the same strategy um you never really one shot things all that much um yeah same thing with like uh, all these items, pretty much like the quick claw. There's uh, the quick claw is situational. It can be nice. Actually, I'll put it at the top of take it or leave it because it could be nice to be wanting to go first if you don't have like a prankster mon for like leech seed or sleep powder or something like that. It could be really nice. Um, it could be kind of like a pseudo sub, uh, pseudo prankster. Um, so that's nice. Memory mushrooms are pretty much the bottom of situational. You basically you'll only do that if you catch a mon that you need a certain move on. So I actually put it at the top of it because there's some mons that you catch that'll you'll want to fuse to another mon with that move so it can be nice um but overall it's not like something you're going to be using for like your main strategy all that much next are the evolutionary items uh they're definitely take it or leave it they're not as useful same with these like they're obviously better but they're not basic they're not what you want um once you get far enough the even if you're mega evolved if you're gigantamax it doesn't matter the gigantamax actually i think is a little bit better just because it gives you generally more hp which is kind of what you'll be using like with the basic strategy of metal burst is more hp is better so that means more damage now another reason why you'll be going like all these will be put in the same tier so the shiny shiny up is basically the second thing that you'll want uh the ability patch a little bit less so but then these 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 things right here are the main reason why you do endless to get more eggs to get more shiny pokemon and you know what i'll put these actually here I'll put them there because they're the same and to get hidden abilities you basically play endless specifically for completing your like decks or completing a pokemon to get all its shinies unlocked because there's three different shinies to get all its hidden ability unlocked to get all its egg moves unlocked um that's basically the only reason why you would want to play endless unless you want to just play for fun which is also fine to see the numbers go up and up and up that's completely fine too it's really fun to watch next are all these items and i'm gonna kind of put them at um amazing find i'll put them right here because they're all super useful um to have actually i'll put this right here because getting more money is super nice because you will be needing it later on down the line but healing, um, they're kind of situational depending on the uh, set you're kind of going with. But they're all really good to have. Now, the DNA Splicers becomes a very good item in Endless. Because you'll want to be fusing um, Mons together so that they can combine luck. So that you can give them certain moves or abilities so that they can be super useful. Same thing with like the Berry Pouch. I think the Berry Pouch gets super nice. It gets super useful later on. I think I'm actually going to put this here. Multi, uh, the multi-hit um, thing, uh, I think is better here because you can do spe special strats like i have as i had a zacian with population bomb max grip claw and fl uh king's rock so that it pretty much always flinched and stole a bunch of items same with these um i think that this is a another tier good and these are really nice because you'll be healing a lot either from berries from leftovers and stuff like that so i think i'll actually put this above soul dudes absolutely and same with these uh the soul dudes are super super nice um i'll actually put them actually up here at the top of this um right below right above the vitamins actually and then this is like the bottom of always grab because you'll you probably later on down the line will not be one shotting anything so the longer you stay on the field the more items you'll grab all right and that is the tier list for endless 
the items kind of moved around a little bit um but i think overall i'm pretty happy with these the ones um uh, below amazing find are pretty much not in a super particular order they kind of are but kind of aren't then everything in take it or leave it situational basically never they're just kind of like there they're not um not really in any sort of um like order like each of the different items but they're still useful but yeah that is these two um tier lists and here we have my credentials for my reasonings for placing certain items where they are please let me know in the comments down below if you agree with these tier lists or if you think an item should have been better in a certain tier list or lower please let me know and i'd be happy to answer any questions you have um please make sure to join the discord and join my community where we talk about poke rogue all the time we talk about all of the shinies we've collected how far we're getting in certain challenges and stuff like that please make sure to also subscribe to the youtube channel because as soon as we hit a thousand subs we'll be doing a charity stream where we will also be doing our Poke Rogue generational challenges, but it'll be randomized, which I think will be a lot of fun. We'll be able to donate to a good cause and do the challenges that you guys have been asking for and uh, really wanting me to do after I complete all of the mono challenge runs. And also make sure to join, uh, join me on Twitch or TikTok. I am live on both on Tuesdays and Thursdays at 5 p.m. PST. Um, and I will be, I do Poke Rogue a lot of the times, but I'm going to slowly expand into other genres that I also enjoy. So make sure to join me on there as well. If you want to get notifications when I go live or have input on what games I play in the future, join the Discord as well and you can uh, let me know there. But that is it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching this and I hope to see you guys next time. Goodbye.